Now that we've got the groove run, we can establish the distance we need or the width of this piece because this piece is going to be recessed in here and our distance is right here. That's the width of the back piece. So I'm going to set a marking gauge just like this to that depth. I might leave it a little bit fat so I can plane it down afterwards. Not too critical, but this is already plain straight. I'm going to run a a gauge line here. And I'll put one on your side so you can see where I'm going with it. Like this. Somewhere like that in the vise will work just fine. There are a couple of ways you can do that. You can either go square on like I have, and then rip, or you can turn it the other way, which some people like and some don't. I like it this way too. So we can come in the vise this way. And this is more commensurate with rip sewing than the other way, because you start at that angle that you might do a better job with. It starts to tighten up in the vise, just turn it around, work from the opposite end and meet in the middle somewhere. Pretty close. A couple of shavings off there, and we're good, to, good to go. Too much, too much, way. But... There I am. I'm ready for the back housing to go in now. Laying out for these is very simple. What we're going to do is right on this top edge where the shoulders here come together, we're going to align them like that. And then you can do this any distance you want from the end of your draw back. I let mine hang over about three or four inches because when I pull the draw out then it cantilevers and I can go all the way back to the draw, the back of the draw, and I can see everything in, in the draw. So any distance you want, but I'm going to suggest three inches is good. Three inches here to that joint. I'm going to go across the two. And that's just go across about quarter of an inch into each one because the groove is only going to be the same depth as the groove we ran on the side, that quarter inch deep. So I'm going to keep it that way. While I've got it here, I make a mark here and here. This, the X shows me which side of that line I'm going to run the actual dado. And this isn't just a housing dado. It's going to have a tenon in it as well. So there's my line here, make sure you're in that nick, pull that first line like this. I'm going to chisel into that line and we're going to go that quarter of an inch deep so we can actually use the same router if we set this to the depth of the groove, that quarter of an inch, which we can do. That was a good guess. So I'm going to use that setting now to get the 
depth here. Now I've not done the width on this yet, so I'm going to take my back piece and use a pencil to give me a guideline like that. But I don't cut to the pencil line, I cut to a definitive knife wall. So I'm just putting this on here so that I can see where to stop and start the gauge line there. Like that. Isn't that a neat thing just to use the router that way? Wide chisel. Where are you? There you are. Alternate between your bench top and the vise. Not too hard on this initial chopping, just consolidate the fibers first into the end grain. Move away from that knife wall, go about halfway across. Housing data, very quick, very effective, very easy. Look at the way this comes together. And this is what we've always wanted. We want to equip people to work with their hands effectively. So I'm about 16th off my depth now. You can use your upper shoulder muscle, rock the chisel, hand behind the cutting edge, pressure down with my left hand, pressure forward with my shoulder and my dominant hand. Crisp, clean work, nearly to depth. Last bit now. This is the last chopping on this side. Don't need to go any deeper. The next bit is this piece is going to go into here. So I'm going to go right on this inside. So I'm trying to, it's almost as though I'm trying to snug underneath the corner there. There's the knife bit that I want to start with. Bring my square in, slide up to it, just gently with that first pass. Now that's putting the bruising on my good wood. So I turn around before I go any deeper and I put all the bruising onto the waste wood, the part that I'm going to be removing. In after the vice, every time you hear me say it, hands behind the cutting edge. Why? Because I care about you. And these are patterns that stay with you forever. You don't have to have accidents. Right in on my knife wall, not too deep. If you hit it too hard, you'll make the recess wider than it needs to be. You are going to be amazed when you get this draw made. You'd be amazed. I haven't had this draw in this bench for a few weeks now because I've been preparing for it. And now I, re I still reach for it after all that time. I can't imagine what life would be like without one. Okay. This is where I usually test this because, so I'm going to put this in here just to see, did I get that end or was I getting this end? It's slightly different, it's just biting, so I'm, I'm happy it's not tight because this ridge is stopping it from going in. But if it was loose, I can angle my chisel over like this, and I can widen the bottom part of this a little bit, and then I come back in on into the same groove, consolidate the end grain fibers, square on, and I should have a very nice tight fit. Close to depth, I am close to my depth line. I'm gonna turn it round and take out the mid waist, that little apex along the ridge line with a wider chisel. 
I've gone right into the groove, into the gauge line, and I'm shooting for the stars here. Double handed, not level, but leveling. Leaving a little bit of residue on there. Bring in my router. This is the real power router, this one. This is, this is power tool woodworking at its best. <sighs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Look at this, that's nice, huh? <sighs> okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try this to see how close I am to see whether this, oh, look at that. It's very nice, that's how it should fit when you're done. So I'm gonna leave this at that, do the other one. We're gonna put a tenon on the end of here. We're gonna put a mortise inside the recess on both ends, a tenoned housing dado. That's what we're gonna end up with. We've got two mortise holes to cut, right bang in the middle of this style, two half inch mortises. That means they're half inch wide and three quarters. That's gonna be the width of this is gonna go in here, so you've got a half inch tenon going all the way through there. So what we do is we want to take a measurement from here, whatever measurement you have here, I've set this for a half inch chisel, so the two pins go just on either side of the width of the chisel, right at the very tip, not at the base. And then I want this distance, so I've got three and a quarter, so I'm gonna take off from that three and a quarter, I'm gonna take off the half inch, that's one and three quarters, half that, uh, no, it's, uh, that's two and three quarters, halve that, and I'm going to need one and three eighths on either side. So I'm going to, from this pin to the stock, I'm going to set this to one and three eighths, just like that. That should put me in the center. As a rough guide, I'm going to use my pencil to transfer lines from the inside, so the side of the walls of the housing dado, I go across here. That gives me the start and stop lines for the gauge line, the gauge lines. And the gauge lines are going to go from the top edge, not the bottom edge. That's going to put me in the center inside. So these two gauge lines are right here. I just run that right up to that other line. there and that's what we're going to chop but what I want to do now is I want to make sure that the knife wall can be put in place I can put my knife wall in here I have to come from the dado itself to make sure that that is exact so I'm coming here make a small nick on the corner go to this side small nick on the corner into the knife nicks here slide up, and then between the gauge lines, that's the position exactly for my wall, for the rim of the mortise. There it is. So I've got gauge lines here, I've got stop and start lines there with a knife wall. Into the vise, and right between the gauge lines, like this. Now what I want to know is, can I get gauge lines in between the dado here? I can get something, I'm not sure how much. There's one, I can only get dots, I can't get, because the pins are not really long enough, but that will be enough to guide me. So there is my position for my mortise on this side. What I can do now is just take my finger and use that to run those lines all the way up there. That will guide me for chopping from this side. Right in between the gaze line, not too hard. 
but if you did hit it too hard, it wouldn't really matter on this because we're going to put a wedge in there and that's going to drive the tenon into either side anyway. So. I'm going with my bevel down here, part way in, about a quarter of the way across, and that means I can lever out that wall, that little bit, like this. Watch this now. Just lever, and you can chop again. So we're probably about half, halfway through on that already. We've done a chop on there, so let's take some from this side out. Clean bench top. Smaller chisel, just going between fingers underneath the rim of the chisel, just start teasing those loose fibers out. Put it in the vise if you're uncertain, for sure. We're not exerting a lot of pressure on this. I'm going to do the same on this side now. So bevel down lever <sighs> you could hear that go through I'm sure I did I felt it So the whole of the inside now is semi-loose. There, I'm going to go just to pare down this wall here, following my gauge line. Just to match up to the opposite side. And the same with this one here. Clean up the inside corner. Now I do the same on the other side. And the only thing I've got left to do then is cut a tenon on one end and then cut the back piece to length and cut the tenon on the other one. So that's what I'm going to do next. I've got my mortise hole skirt and this is the back piece so this is going to go in here hopefully I flush this at the, the top edge of the groove the bottom of the back piece tap it home fully into the recess flip over and that mark that gives me the exact position why didn't I use the mortise gaze that I use I could do if I flush this I could run the mortise gaze but this is just as quick and I can run my pencil line in confidence, knowing that if there was any widening of the hole with the chisel when I widened it, this is going to make it exact. I take this apart now, and this is going to be the length of my tenon. So I bring this, I've already sized this. This is the same length as my front piece. It's exactly the same. It fits into the drawer opening. So I can put this directly onto here, flush it on this outside edge, 
and I can give myself a chisel mark, I mean a knife mark right on that corner. That gives me the shoulder line to cut to. I'm going to bring that all the way around here, like this, onto the top edge, which still has to be planed down level with the two sides. Onto here and connect the dots here. Okay. These lines here, now that I have on the end of here, can be just pulled along here, like that. Just use your finger as a guide. And then we're going to go with the tenon saw. Small tenon saw. Down on either side. And you can cut the sides of the tenon first if you want to. No real benefit either way. Down to the line. and leave the black line in. Down the cheek. Like that. And now I'm gonna go corner to corner, right on that very corner. Get it started, down to the bottom corner. I'm going to drive a little wedge in there, which will give the effect of causing a, a compression against the, the side of the dovetail, wall, uh, the tenon walls. So which way did I have this? So this is going to go, no, not that one, this one. I knew something was wrong. So this goes in here now. I'm feeling for the mortise. Now I'm in. Turn it over, see what we got. So try and align it. And now I'm going into the groove, or into the housing. So I'm down. There it is, complete joint. I've lost the kerf in there, so I'm gonna open it up and go back in and saw the kerf a little bit more because it closed up under the compression of the joint. That doesn't matter. I'll just go back in and open it a little bit. But that's it, that's how we make that joint. I'm gonna do the same on the other end and then I'll be ready for gluing up. I'm gonna use a bigger saw kerf just to increase that groove for the wedge. Hopefully that will work. So I'm ready to glue this together and I have all of the parts fitted, I've got Mark, everything's marked, I know where I'm going with it, I've got my clamps behind me, my glue is ready, my glue sticks are here. So let's go ahead and glue this together. Ooh, we want to make sure we've got the right bits in, don't we? Okay. The sequence is to do one side and then the other side, so I'm going to do one side of my dovetail like this, glue into the recess, onto the end as well. This is the lubrication side. 
that helps it come into place. Also make sure you've got glue on every surface. And then I'm going to do the back um, end of the with the tenon in and then work the other side as well. Because you can't really spread these without um, affecting the joint. So we do one side then the other. On this one, again, we're going to do the two sides of the dovetails. Here, 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 and here. Have a sequence for it. De decide what you want to, oops, decide what you want to do. You don't need to do your shoulders. and seat the joints make sure they're fully seated so this is an exact opposite to that this is how I had my tenon so I'm going this way I don't really need to put it on here I'm putting it on here and while I'm there, up the side of my tenon, up the side of my tenon. And I'm going on these faces because I'm going to drive the wedge in and that will work. That's there, so this comes over this way. Go directly in. My tenon nub just uh, protrudes ever so slightly. I'm going in here. I want to make sure these are as seated as I can get them. And now I'm going to do exactly the opposite. Remember when you're applying glue, the, the, the wood is swelling the whole time. So it's why we move systematically, methodically, and progressively when we're in this mode of gluing up. We've got to do these two joints have to go in at the same time. So you probably don't need me to tell you that. I got my clamps ready, I already said that, didn't I? Why did I? I love at the end of the day when I'm gluing up, I love it, I love it. Just before I'm going home, I get everything synchronized and set the clamps, close the door, turn off the lamp, go home. to go. Get that off. Woo, a little gap here, not much. One thing I've got to do is make sure that we're square before we leave. 
It's hard to do this. You've got to really go over the top of that mortise. I think this is out of square. Feels like it is. Yeah, a little bit. So this is shorter here, so I have to squeeze on this one here yeah. and then check myself. And I think that probably did it. 21 and 5 eighths. 21 and 5 eighths. Okay. Get your clamps on here. Go over the top of your dovetails like this. Now, I already had planed mine flush, so I know mine were flush. And what we're going to do in a second is we're going to apply these clamps and then we're going to bang on the ends of the front so that we can make sure that the top of the dovetail fits tight into the recess. Now I can't really see what's going on inside there. Here's what I mean, I'm going to put this on the end and I'm going to bang on here and here to make sure everything is directly down. Looking wonderful. And I'm going to see about a clamp on here. You can't really clamp inside that easily. If you did clamp inside there, you'd have to put a stick across there to stop the sides from bellying in. So I'm going to go this way and make sure this is seated. And then I'm going to cut my wedges while this is Uh, locked in place like this. I'm going to check myself for square again. I'm going to cut the wedges. So we go inside, inside corner. I'm going to this back edge here just to make sure nothing moved because of the pressure of the clamp. And I should really show you this because I have exactly 25 and 1 16th corner to corner and 25 and 1 16th corner to corner. I'm dead square. So that's that. Now I'm going to just put this out of the way just for a minute because I'm going to cut my wedges. I've got a little bit of black walnut here and I'm going to cut my wedges. How am I going to do that? These are not very long. They're only going in about half an inch or five eighths of an inch. So not big wedges. There's one, there's two, and there is three. So I've got a spare in case I need it. To do this, I really have to take these clamps off at this side. But already I'm sure those, uh, that glue is already s swelling the fibers. So I'm going to take the clamp off. Now one of them, I think I did see one of them has closed up slightly, but I can still see it. Put this in the vise this way. And cinch it tight. What I'm going to do is take a chisel. This is a three quarter inch. I'm going to go right into my saw curve here. Just open it up a little bit just to give the wedges a start. A little bit of glue on here. Should have checked the width of my wedge first, shouldn't I? Well, some things just happened to come out right. So here I'm just driving my wedge. Flip over and do the same on the other side. 
And you can check the bottom of your housing dados to make sure they didn't open up in the process. It's quite heavy. Good lens. I hope you've enjoyed making this project. This is a wonderful part of your workbench. You'll never regret having this drawer in your workbench. Okay, clamps back on, leave it till tomorrow morning when it's nice and dry and everything's cured. I will come back in and fit the draw bottom. So this can go right up to your wedge, don't worry about it now. Make sure your clamp is parallel across to that back rail. We'll leave it overnight. I'm going to just leave this, walk out the door, go home, have a nice cup of tea, have my dinner. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Great. That's it. Dead easy.